thought, well, okay, so now I said to uh, Herman Mashaba, your friend, uh, he was on fire, but my goodness, you were scorching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, I hope Herman, I'll send a clip to Herman. <laughs> oh, you'll see it. You'll see it. What about that? The, lots of speculation. You and Herman, you, you're good friends. You both have a light green color uh, in your logos. Post 29th of May, is there a get together? All right. Herman is not my friend. I didn't know Herman until really during the negotiation. But you know, I came to respect the man. Because Herman has never told me one lie. Herman stick to his words. You can take Herman Masaba's word to the bank. That's what I respect in the man. And my closeness to him is because I admire the man. I respect the man. Because he has never told me one lie. And he always sticks his word. I'm saying to you, if you feel you're not going to vote for me, Herman Masaba is your guy. Thank you. What's your agenda? My agenda, my first agenda is I'm colored. And colored people are not on the table. My people are nowhere. So my first agenda was to put the colored voice on the table. I've done that. But you don't build the country excluding no one. Now why it's time for, my agenda is it's time for a color president. I'll tell you why. Because my grandfather's white is Japanese, 100% Japanese. My grandmother is Irish, 100% Irish. My father is a mix between the two. I am, my mother is a black Sutu woman. I'm the product of that. And every kind of friend I have has either a German grandmother, a white grandfather, or a white thing, or a black auntie, or a black grandmother. So we've got everybody in us. We've had a white president in this country. Through the National Party, we are still divided. We had a black president through the ANC. We are still divided. It's time for a color president because I can't oppress white people. I can't oppress black people. Because if I do that, I'll be oppressing a part of me. So I am the epitome of getting together. So my agenda is, Rob, as I say, my life was fine until I met Rob Ersoff. Now he's a very humble guy. People don't know about Rob. Rob is giving millions to charity. He is not talking about it. I've never met anybody that loves this country like Rob. We fight. Don't look at Rob doesn't agree with. Rob was telling me about the independent Cape Town. I said, go fuck yourself. I can't be doing that. Independent, I must come with a passport to see my children. But we argue with Rob. But he loves the country. And what he has done, I want everybody to know what Rob has done. Rob was here at business conference, and he said, I was watching, I was like, wow. He said, Shikil and Malula is cheap. And he went for, but what's significant, Rob has invested a lot of his money in airports. And by the time he called the minister, they must grant him some license for stupid. You don't, so Rob is either very stupid or he's got integrity. Because Rob stood on the stage. And the day day after, Alex, you can testify, there was a storm, a media storm. People were going on Twitter. They were going for Rob. And I said nothing, because I such the stupidity you don't defend. But when they changed, and they said, Rob is a racist, I couldn't say nothing. I stood up on my Twitter account, on my Facebook, and I've got millions of people through all my socials, more than a million people through all my socials. And I said, you can call Rob what you call him, but I'm not gonna stand here for a man that I know his kids, a man that I've seen what he does in the townships. I'm not gonna stand up for him and say he's not racist. Rob doesn't have a racist bone in his body. And all of you that call him racist can go to hell. And that's the same way I'll stand up for South Africans. And that's the same way I'm standing up for South Africa.
This country has given me more than it gave all of you here. This country has given me a second chance. This country has given me redemption. I owe this country more than anybody in this room. That's my agenda. Let's look at the election and where the PA is likely to be nationally, in your opinion. And you said earlier that the DA has lost the Western Cape. Would you just unpack your thinking behind both of those? And I'll, I'll, I'll put a rider on here. Gayton's been on the money. He's been on the money consistently and much, much better than pretty much anybody else when you've been making these forecasts. So I'm going to hold you to this one. All right, just before I make the forecast, I was never allowed. The first time I addressed people and they laughed was at Buzz News. They laughed at me when I told them that Jacob Zuma is the most popular man in this country. They all laughed. And where you get this stupid speaker? Because in your head, you think Jacob Zuma is to everybody what he is to you. Jacob Zuma is the most laughed man. If you make a poll today and you put Mandela here and you put Jacob Zuma here, Jacob Zuma will beat Mandela by a mile. Most black young people call Mandela a sellout, a traitor. Now, Jacob Zuma, so that's why all this poll, somebody spoke about a brand this poll. I remain, I tell you some of this polls. Polls are for strippers and we should keep it there. Let me tell you why I'm saying that. 2021, I looked at all the polls. Nobody gave the PA a chance. They asked one guy about the PA, he says, they'll be lucky to get two seats. Brand this poll, all the polls. I would trust the Mavericks poll more than the Brenda's poll. Because at least he knows how to shut up. The Polling party companies didn't give PA a chance. We didn't get the two seats. They were right, we wouldn't get two seats. We got 86 seats. Now, how do you miss 86 seats? What's more stupid is they still don't learn their lesson. Between 2016, between 2016 and 2021, the PA has grown 16 times. This time, we're not aiming so lofty. We just want to grow 10 times. We've done it already with 16. So once you come from the corporate world, you understand the difference between butter and bullshit. So the, what I see going around here, and the show, there was a by-election, the most contested by-election. And you can see Rob is the undercover DA. And I'm not talking about this white shirt, blue shirt he was wearing today. Rob took a bet with me. He said, there's no way you can beat the DA in Pagdin. Bullshit! Pagdin was three weeks ago, four weeks ago. The DA has never lost Pagdin. I said, Rob, not only am I going to beat them, I, I don't know the English word for it. I said, Rob, I come a footer. The footer is more than blacksome. For white men said, they come a footer more. They're going to pedal beat you. And we got double the amount of votes. Ellen Wendy went to every house in George and he gave out a flyer and said, <laughs> I'm a drunk dealer. By the people in the area knows I'm the only one that takes on the drunk dealer so they know it, it's crazy, he's talking crazy. And we got double. So to answer your question, we are going to get, at the moment we're going to get 8% conservatively. If, and if I and look at, if you ask me on a good day, what will we get? I think 12. We just want to get more than the EFF. We've beaten the EFF. There was, in the past nine by-elections, the EFF beat, beat us twice. We beat them seven times. So I'm just going on, 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 on scientific numbers, not on 
it. We beat them seven times. I want to beat Julius Malema because Julius Malema is the last in this country. Nick. Julius Malema is a racist to the core. Julius Malema says, kill the boer, kill the farmer. But Julius Malema, when my deputy president, Kenny Kunene, called him a cockroach, we are spending more than two million because he took us to court. He's offended. Imagine in the Constitutional Court, we're talking about, is he a court rich or not? <laughs> we are two million rands down. 2016, the most powerful man in this country was Julius Malema. Jacob Zuma, President Jacob Zuma was telling me a story. He said he spoke to Obama. And he told Obama something. Obama said to him, yeah, I hear what you say, Mr. Zuma. What is Julius saying? So Julius was very powerful, but he said one line. And please go, go Google this. He said two things. One line, he said, I was about to vote for you. Vote was he mean to remove Ethel Trollope in Nelson Mandela Bay. We've agreed with a deal. And he said in his press conference, he's going to cut the throat of whiteness. That moment, my neighbor asked me to drop his son at the Freda rugby game. That boy adores me, was eight years old. He adores me. And I looked at him in the mirror. And I said, what will this boy think of me if I vote with a man and said he's going to cut the throat of whiteness? I called Malema's people. I said, I'm no longer voting for you. I called Trollope. I said, I don't know who's your son, Goma, but he's really changed me. And we made a joke about it. And then I wrote an open letter to Julius. I said to him, you are racist. Stop calling white people thieves. And all the political party leaders were all scared to say anything about Malema. I was the only one that took him on. He hates me. I hate him. I have no time for him. I think he's a wrecking ball. He will destroy this country. Everything Malema touches turn into shit. Everything. Everything. So what you must do, leave, this is not milk time. One of my best friends gave me a saying. This is not milk time, it's tequila time. Stop voting for the DA and for the Freedom Fund Plus. Try me, and you'll see what is an action man. I will fix this country. BE does not work. What will I replace BE with? I will replace BE. You must have as a partner who you want to. That's how business works. I can't have a person that wants to be at the top of the letter or the top of the salary bill at the bottom of the letter head, and some of them just want to play golf. Some of you have what your B partners, your mates, your gardeners. Wait till that fucker gets his first million. And you say to him, the dishes are dirty. He's like, why can't we hire the person to do the dishes? We both have money, fucker. So I'm saying to you, I'm going to start a fund, an empowerment fund. I will take 1% of the turnover of every company. Turnover, not profit. I've got no time for your gymnastics, accounting gymnastics. These ANC leaders, you can fool, they have no commercial sense. They've never had a tax shop. I know for about businesses. You can't fool me. I have probably more money than most of you in this room. But I'm saying to you, turnover of every company, and I started an empowerment fund administered by business people. And that is what empowerment is about. They will make a loan. And at different stages, you can't start a loan for a, for a bank. You must start with a car wash. And you can go on with your business. I will cancel race. When you fill in a form, you will not be asked if you're white, if you're black. We just want to make sure you're not a legal foreigner. You and us can build this country and never forget that. A good market plan will dark his head like that plan. So imagine those two when they get together. Right, Gator, I, had, I didn't even talk to you about Neisner, and I'm sure somebody here is going to pick up on that side. We've got the uh, question time. Um, thanks very much. Um, if your primary message is either you or the EFF, 
Why do you think the media is completely ignoring the EFF message that's currently available on at least five YouTube videos over the last week that it's one Africa, one president and one currency? Surely that's self-defeating by the EFF and something that politicians should use against them. The media are scared of the EFF. The media is scared of the backlash of Malema and then because they personally go for since he told that UK journalists, go out, you're small boy, and those things. Malema does what he does in the, does what he likes in that parliament. It says that old people around. Yeah. He's not gonna do that shit when we are there. <laughs> My people will tell you, hey, for sick, sit down. That was like history. He's not going to chase the PA people around in their parliament. So if you want to see him, the fight here, you're watching the wrong game. There's a test match happening. And you are busy here watching the Curry Cup. The fight is between EFF and PA. Today, there's an election and watch tomorrow. Black people are not racist. The black people are the most least racist people you can find. The message of kill the boy, kill the farmer has pissed off so many black people. That tomorrow I predict Malema will not get more than 200 votes tonight. It's a 50% black area. You watch it and it will make sure you get it. In that by-election tomorrow, I predict I will get more than 500. The ANC will probably win it. We will be the DA. But the ESS, the message only reaches foreigners. They know the story. There will be a 10% party. I don't agree with Rob when he says Zuma will get 6%. Never. Zuma, you've been told, is being yaffed in, the, in KwaZulu Natal. Yes! But let me give you something that you don't know about Zuma. He's more laughed in the Eastern Cape than he is in KwaZulu-Natal. I guess you didn't know that. Zuma has been everywhere. You've seen he's not gone to the Eastern Cape because he knows he's his stronghold. He'll go there last. So I'm saying to everybody here, every white person in this room has had a thought, and tell me if I'm lying. You've had this thought, and that doesn't make you racist. But I'm just going to turn the thought around for you. Every white person sitting here today has had a thought like, what is wrong with black people? They are suffering. They don't have jobs. But they still vote for the ANC, isn't it? That's not a racist thought. You've had that thought. I will tell you what thought do we have about you. What is wrong with white people? They still vote for the DA and the DA is not coming anyway. They still vote for the losing team. Imagine to go, you are a winner in your own right, and you go and make your ex why somebody that you know is not going to win. It's the same thing why some black people vote for the ANC and why you vote for the DA. I hope I can change your mind. If I'm not your cup of coffee, vote for Masama. But if, I'm your, if you really want a man that's going to come in and fix stuff in this country, that's going to hang the criminals, that's going to send our children to the army, that's going to clean up. My deputy president was mayor for two days. The first thing he saw, he asked them, what file is that? Kenny Kunene was acting mayor of Joburg last year for two days. They asked, what file is that? Why is that complaint file so thick? They said it's all the white people and Jewish people that have businesses. That have businesses that the businesses have been hijacked by foreigners in city of Joburg. He says, what? Call the police, let's go. In the two days he was there, he put more people out of those buildings than they've done in the past 10 years. That's the type of leadership that you want. You know, there's some people that truly believe we need food security. You can't put the farmers and treat them like they are nothing. We have leaders that still believe. This is a true story. One leader was really saying, it's not a joke. When we said to the, the farmers are important for food security. Let us sit down with the farmers and we can expropriate worth compensation. The farms they don't use. But the ones that are producing food at the moment, you don't change a working model. 
don't do that. They said, no, at the farms, we can buy food that we can pay. <laughs> we laugh about it, but that's the level of thinking that some people have. Len, everybody is scared to say it. I'm going to say it here today. If you're going to take Len and put it in my hands, I live in Sanders. What do I know about farming? I know of people that can farm in our communities. They just need the opportunity. I know of farmers that have 70 farms. They only use five. Let's take the 65 worth compensation and we give it to the ones that can farm. But to expropriate land without compensation, it's a disaster. Once you lose property rights, you have no country left. Foreign direct investment will never invest in a country where you are not secured of property rights. I am for property rights. I believe my friend from Rock, for instance, bought land. Rock wasn't here. He didn't steal that land. We paid, we paid market value. We need to protect people like that. But people are scared in my community to say what I'm going to say now. I will never agree with expropriation without compensation. I agree with expropriation with compensation and market value. People don't vote in white and vote right. The thing that that supports your argument in the Western Cape. And you, you didn't touch on that. And a lot of people here are thinking, whoa, it's the one province in the oh, country yeah. that's working. Demographics in the Western Cape would support an argument for a colored premier, just for a starters, if, you, if the, the majority of people in this province, as they are, are colored. Is that what you're banking on here? Yes, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I've announced that I'm going to be, for my party has chosen me as the premier candidate of the Western Cape. And I can tell you, you must understand the colored mentality. You can push a colored person until he says, that movie here. They pushed them too far. El Dorado Park was under the DA, it's gone. Eden Park was under the DA and the ANC, it's gone. Ennedale was under the DA and the ANC, it's gone. Uh, uh, Botchers here in Cape Town, in, in George was under the Good is gone to PA. Uh, Pandin was under the DA. I'm trying to mention, so I talk scientific things, not hula things. In the Western Cape, uh, I'm colored. Afrikaans is my first language. The people that they put a white mayor, a white premier, that's not stupid, in a place where people are still conscious about race. Ellen Wendy, they sent him to George for a month and I jumped high in the air to compete with me. After he gave his speech, he spoke about markets, the rent. There are the rent, I didn't hear that I hear the for Komori Ranki. And then when they could only speak English and broken Afrikaans, why do you get a guy like me? I come, proud Afrikaans, we have to talk. I speak English as my second language, or third language, or fourth language. And I even know present language. That is what this country needs. Senyan. The Western Cape is in trouble to answer your question, Alec. The majority of people in the Western Cape are colored. The day is built on colored support. My people has given the black men a chance in Mandela in the Western Cape. They've given the white people a chance to move Ellen Wendy.
Nothing changed for them. Now, you do get one or two stupid colors that will still vote for the white men. And it's not being racist, it's reality. The majority, the reason why some of you vote, deep down you disagree with the approach of Helen Zeller. I saw you were clipping, and I spoke about common decency, because you're decent people. But you still, some of you still got to vote for the DA. So race is still, I want to unrace us here in this country. Race is still a factor. I watched TV the other day. I'm not tired, I switched on the TV. There's a kind of guy and a white guy that boxed. I didn't know if they, 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 they were kickboxing. I saw the kind of guy and the white guy. I didn't know one of them. Immediately I said to the kind of guy, Bunab, Bunabun. Look, Sagan, I walked into a room. There's colored guys there. There's white guys there. There's black guys. There's a colored guy. So I'm going to walk to the colored guys first. And you are going to walk to the white guys. I let you just kneel now. That is just, we still have some things in us that we need to. When I rent a car, you know how I know who previously rented the car? I checked the radio. There is a Jacaranda of that Vietnam like, War, you had a Freedom Front Club. RS here. If it is 5 FM, I see at least maybe the English speaking white. If it is Metro, I know maybe it's Penuel, my friend Penuel, Black Pen. <laughs> they read it. But then you get the Guala Guala. I know this was a Zulu. <laughs> so there's still some aspects that we need to get over time doesn't make you a bad person. And voting patterns, that's what I'm trying to break. That voting patterns. In Patton Bay, the majority of people that voted there was counted for the PA. But I, put, I took a white lady, Michelle Buta, as our first counselor. Not because of, I wanted to show people it's not just about color. Sometimes you have to also look at competence all the time. And I put Michelle as a white lady, and I was criticized. I didn't care. The Western Cape, let them not lie to you. I spoke now to the ultimate gentleman outside is the deputy mayor. Superb guy. He was trying from the DA, the deputy mayor of the DA. He's an upstanding gentleman. I spoke to him and I could see. And he was trying to tell me I'm dreaming. We even took a bet of 10,000. Now, I know that's a lot because I know how much mayors earn. And I want to say to him, and I said to him, answer one question. He couldn't answer the question. The question is, without the PA, the DA lost a third of the voters in the stronghold. Without us being strong, we are a force now. So the Western came. And his anger, anger makes me say, I don't want to work with a deal and whatever, but on that table, when we do negotiations, you, took your, you take your ego outside. You take your anger outside. I would love to work with a DA. I've tried to work with Helen Zeller. We can't work together. But the DA can find a guy like the mayor. This guy is a good guy. Uh, Southern Hill Lewis. Smart, respectful guy. Those are the type of guys we want to negotiate with. You can't negotiate with John. He can't take a decision. He's weak. He's still holding on to the tomb of Helen Zeller. He takes no decision. He's just there. He's a, what we call him, being a renter black. He's a renter white. He's a renter president. He's weak. He doesn't take decisions. You can't be a leader and don't take decisions. Nasna. What happened in Nasna? We have an ANC mayor in Nasna. It's a coalition. We have an ANC mayor. I have an opinion of him. My opinion of him is that he's not the smartest guy. I don't think he's the right guy for Nasna. That's my opinion. But because I'm a man of principle, I got certain things in Nasna for not, not to happen, not to change the leases people have. Say, no, let people, no matter we were not there, those people got this leases, let's respect the contract. 
So I can't get everything. Am I happy with, with the mayor? Honestly, I can't change him. Because that, then I should have won outright. I didn't win outright. You don't behave in a coalition like you, you, you have a loan say. But there's no water in Eisner. It's rain. There should be water. We messed up. We messed up. I'm part of that coalition. I can't come here today and throw them under the bus. I'm equally responsible for the fact that there's no water in Eisner. But I want to say something about Eisner to teach you how we think as colored and black people. When there's no water in Eisner, for two weeks, Ellen Wendy jumped on a plane on a Sunday, on a Saturday, sorry. He went to Nizna. He went to go and walk and tell people there's no water here, the PA is left. He did that. Fine. But let me tell you what we looked at. You saw the fact that he is handsome. Let me show you what we looked at. Franz Huck, 50 kilometers from his office, or an hour from his office, has not had water for a month. The colored and black people didn't have water in Franz Huck. The moment the white people in Naisla don't have water, he needs everything. He goes to Naisla. Now, those are the things that you might not see. And those are the things that we see. Franz Hook voted for the DA. It's here. The black and colored people didn't have water. He went to Naisna. Both are wrong. Wrong is wrong. Wrong shouldn't make you jump. Because it's the lighter skin is the whites that don't have water. Now it's Armageddon. So I'm saying to you, as the DA should own the role, that there's no water in Franz Hook. I am owning my role that there's no water in Eisner. And we now I hear there's water. Because we fixed that. And I promise you, you vote for me. And I don't need a coalition partner. Like I gave water and you come clean water. You will not have a problem. Because I'll be your next premier of the Western Cape. At worst, at best, I'll be president of the country. Guyton McKenzie for the PI. Thank you.